Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Institute for Kerbal Studies in Kerbal Space Program 0.23. I haven't been in this series for a while because, to a large extent, the Realism Overhaul series that I started uh, took over as my main hardcore series because it's got all the hardcore mods that this does, uh, Tac Life Support, Remote Tech, um, Fermero Space, and Deadly Reentry, plus it's got the really huge Earth, right? I mean, it's got uh, Kerbin resize to the size of Earth, making that more difficult as well. And so that's sort of more of a hardcore series than this one is. So I needed some way to make this series a little bit more distinct and give it a new sense of purpose. And I think the purpose is going to be to to explore the Interstellar Pack, because that's one thing that this series has that the Realism Overhaul series doesn't. Uh, this one has the Interstellar Pack installed and it's integrated into the tech tree. This is the KSP Interstellar tech tree. So we've got a bunch of science and I think this is the time to deploy it in order to uh, make our, well, open up some of the technology that would be relevant for the KSP Interstellar Pack. And then this is going to become the KSP Interstellar series. It's still got the remote tech satellites in orbit. It's still got the all the persistent stuff uh, in orbit around Kerbin and the Moon and Minmus. But uh, we're going to be looking at the interstellar pack. So, oop, uh, ion propulsion. Oh, uh, well, I don't know. Plasma thrusters could be useful. But really what I need is these large electrics. This is the core of the interstellar pack right here. We Once you've gotten these batteries, and this already had the radiators and the radio radiators, and here we get, uh, very importantly, the electric generators and uh, even more radiators. You'll find out why the radiators are important. So let's research this. And taking a look at what comes up next, well, it looks like we're going to have to have some... Because uh, we really need this one, I think. So let's just get all the support stuff. Mm. Well, let's get this one, because it's got the interstellar pack. Uh, these are interstellar pack parts, too, these plasma thrusters. And I guess this one. Okay, and then this one... No. Huh. I'm looking for specifically the nuclear reactors. Now we've got uh, this uh, radioisotope thermal electric generator, but that's just normal stuff. What we need is nuclear reactors, and that doesn't seem to be around here. Okay. So I guess it would be up here. So I guess I'll have to get heavy rocketry. Let's see now. No. What's this? Well, we're in a hunt for what I need here. Okay. And what about these? Looks like this will be more in line with it. Either this or this is the precursor. say oh there's a nuke symbol okay well then I need this one as well okay here we go so with this I'll have enough stuff for the interstellar pack to show you how it all works together and uh, do some interesting things with it but this is not the limit of the interstellar pack the interstellar pack has antimatter stuff and all sorts of warp drive stuff way over here um, this is just the uh, very beginning of things, so let's take a look at that first. Alright, so I'll research this as well. And uh, now we're all set. So we still have 2,200 science left after opening the core of the inter uh, interstellar pack. And so let's go to VAB and take a look at these new parts. Okay, so when using nuclear stuff, uh, I don't want to put uh, Kerbals in orbit just yet with all these uh, untested nuclear components. So let's have a probe core. And what we have is right at the end of the tech tree, we've got these thermal rocket nozzles and plasma thrusters and everything. The important thing is these thermal rocket nozzles. Let's 
let's go small here. Let's say... Now we've got the other stuff in science. Um, no. Utility, I think. Ah, here we go, yes. Okay, so let's start out with a uh, nuclear reactor, because that's very important. Let's have a nu nuclear, nuclear reactor there. And let's also have electric generator, though we don't need a huge one like that. Let's have a small electric generator. So we'll have the electric generator right underneath here. And a substantial nuclear reactor. And then... the nozzle. The nozzle really depends on... I mean, really there's no benefit to using... Well, let's, let's go small first. I mean, there's no reason to go huge on this. Let's, let's just use the smallest parts to show how it works. The nozzles really depend on the core heat of the nuclear reactor. And that depends on your tech level. And the tech level, you'll be able to see when I... Oh, I guess not. Um, oh, I guess it gets upgraded uh, in the dialogue in-game. So, that's fine. Let's get the thermal nozzle on. Okay, and this will provide the thrust. Hopefully. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. This one. Okay. Right, so then we need some radiators. Hmm. I think going with an inline radiator and uh, outboard radiators is a good idea. Let's have that here. Okay, and then small heat radi radiators. Ooh, small is very not what I would use to describe this. Let's just have two of these. And I'm going to use angle snapping. I always forget to do that. And here. Well, can't really see how they look while deployed, but let's move them a little bit lower here. Alright, now the electric generator is going to generate electric power. So really uh, it can, you don't need to put uh, overabundance of solar panels on this now because the electric generator will take the nuclear power and uh, make use of it to charge everything up. Um, it also produces a unique kind of power to it. Uh, you'll see the um, well, let's just go for the electric generator here. It outputs this uh, both electric charge and megajoules. Megajoules is a specific kind of power that will be used for other things, including the containment of antimatter. And so it's, it's very important in the KSP interstellar pack. Uh, so the idea behind this is that you, it's going to separate out electric charge and these megajoules, which is also electric charge. Uh, because it doesn't want all your other equipment to lose electric charge just because uh, the megajoule requirements is uh, getting depleted. So the electric charge will continue to... So it won't drain all your batteries on the vessel basically is what I'm saying. As far as all the KSP interstellar parts, they're not going to drain your uh, the electric charge from any other batteries you might slap on. And so let me slap on some batteries. And uh, that will give us, uh, give our antennas, especially our antennas, the ability to maintain contact and everything. Okay, I have to get used to the fact that these battery banks aren't uh, adjusted with large numbers for the realism overhaul. In realism overhaul, these things have uh, much bigger values. Okay. Now, like I said, we need an antenna to maintain contact. That's nice and huge, isn't it? Um, let's go for something more modest first. Yep. Okay, but we'll also need the antenna that's always out. Uh, 
And I feel better if I have a Commutron 16 as well, or or I guess a Commutron 32, since we've got those. And as usual, I'm going to tilt it in one direction, in this case up like this. Ah, uh, that's still sticking out. Come on. Okay, that's good. Alright, so in theory, this should work. We've got probe core, we've got uh, communication apparatus. Let's action group the communication stuff. So especially the Commutron uh, uh, 32 should be action grouped. Let's toggle that. Okay. Let's say this is a functional thing, and I hope it is, we'll see. And all this will do is it'll be a little, uh, it'll be a little sound, well, I guess we should add more communication stuff to allow it to be a more useful communication satellite, huh? Hmm. Well, we've got these huge dishes now. This, this could be used for, uh, we could send this to another planet. Oh, we've got this one too. Actually, that, that I like these better. Okay, well I do want it to snap on. Yeah, there we go. That'll be fine. Can we uh, see how it is deployed? I really like the look of these. That's nice. I wish I could see these deployed so that uh, we get a proper sense of things, but alright. Okay, so we've got that. Now, how much does this all... what's the mass of all this? I seem to have an old version of KSP Interstellar on here because I there's actually an electric uh, charge management thing with the megajoules and everything. To make sure that, uh, well, it's actually a thermal a thermal uh, management thing, because we need to make sure that we can radiate all the heat, otherwise the reactor will shut down. Um, oh, uh, I just noticed uh, RCS. We need RCS, don't we? So let's get uh, RCS tank in. Mm. Yeah, so, we're actually pretty small here. You can see the normal RCS tank is huge by comparison. And I guess a reaction control system is called for as well. Yeah. Just, just get the usual thruster blocks. Alright, that's fine. I think. Sort of aimed at the antenna though, if uh, the antenna is open, but don't see how I could put it that it won't be aimed at something. Well, I guess I could uh, at least uh, save it from the Commutron 32s. There we go. Okay, so like I was saying, how much of this is the mass of this? Let's get. Um, Kerbal Engineer on. I don't have Mechjeb on here. So this is 1.7 kilograms, but it doesn't read Delta V. That worries me a bit. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Very important. You need propellant. Okay, so here's the thing. The nuclear reactor and the thermal nozzle are great, but you need to send something through the nuclear reactor in order to uh, well, in, uh, basically the nuclear reactor just heats the propellant up, so you need propellant. You can't just uh, have, stop on a nuclear reactor and not have any propellant. So let's have a propellant. Ah, there we go. Now we've got delta V. Now you can see the whole nuclear reactor thing, efficient though it is, look at uh, 550 um, seconds of um, ISP, but it's still not perfect. It's still... Um, wow, these 
uh, heat radiators are a little bit delta V consuming, aren't they? Wow. So maybe we need some more propellant. We seem to be configured for liquid fuel and oxidizer all the way here, yeah? This is uh, LFO, yeah. You see, this can have different types of propellant. It could just go with liquid. Keythane. Liquid methane. Water. Actually, water would be good. Water is a good one. Do we, uh, how big are the water tanks? Uh, in the uh, Interstellar mod, you get these water tanks, but they're huge. And ammonia, too. And uh, with... Uh, see, they're, they're too big. Um, with the realism overhaul stuff, you can also use... Uh, uh, hydrogen and uh, but that's not a choice we get here but uh, you can you also use uh, liquid hydrogen um, I don't see any reason to have oxygen um, you really don't need an oxidizer when you're passing something through a, a nuclear reactor like this so let's just get a oh that's a big fuel tank so maybe we should just get a normal tank of uh, liquid fuel. Where are those? Hmm. Oh, I guess I could use the solidified ones. Why do I only have the really big liquid fuel tank here? It's not supposed to be a 2.5 meter liquid fuel tank. I think uh, the KSP... Or, or no, I might not have unlocked it yet because I didn't really unlock any aircraft parts, have I? So I didn't unlock those. Okay, okay. So uh, that is a KSP interstellar thing, but I didn't bother to... Oh, and these are all stuff that you could have for... Uh, for instance, this is the fuel for your... Uh, reactor and stuff like that so okay but that's a separate issue so I didn't unlock the part with just liquid fuel so I guess we'll just have to go uh, LFO liquid fuel oxidizer and yeah so let's go back to that part but these are heavy these uh this might be overkill for such a small reactor, but we need something. Uh, let's see. Okay, so, I mean, maybe the inline radiator is good enough. Let's see. So it says, um, heat radiated, base 0 0.06, but it can be upgraded to 10. Um... Radiator performance, it depends on the heat it looks like. It gets better and better depending on the heat differential between the, uh, the reactor and the vacuum. Um, but how many, how many megawatts does this thing uh, output in heat? Uh, not that one. This one. The safe one. Um, doesn't really say very well does it okay well uh, for our first uh, for first attempt better safe than sorry huh so I'm not going to mess with it and we're going LFO wow those are huge uh, let's go with the smaller roundified fuel tanks and yeah and these remember require fuel lines otherwise they're not going to feed anything in There we go. 1,781. That's not bad. The thrust is minuscule though. So you can see that uh, just having these nuclear rockets doesn't mean that you're suddenly uh, suddenly overpowered or anything. The KSB Interstellar Pack is not overpowered. Especially if you're using with the tech tree and you're only opening this technology after spending so much science. and. Yeah, even now you just get this much. Now, of course, the bigger nuclear reactors are uh, better, but okay, come on. 
but not that much better. And you can see, let's see, our Filipchenko launcher is uh, huge by comparison to this little probe. So I don't think we really need that. Lyanov is probably a little bit small though. What was Volanov? Oh, that's complicated. Let, let's... Yeah, let's just go with the Filipchenko anyway. Uh, let's make this compact. And it'll be able to carry much bigger nuclear stuff into orbit, but let's try this out and make sure that our waste heat gets radiated out properly so that the reactor core doesn't uh, explode or anything. And I sense that what we really need here is not struts really so much as a fairing. And I forget whether this pack has fairings that decouple. I don't think so. So it'll have to be like that. And yeah, this, this fairing doesn't decouple. And we don't need such a huge decoupler. You can just deal with... That'll do. Actually, that's pretty heavy for a 1.25 meter decoupler. Let's just go with the stock one. Okay. Let's send this out a pretty far distance. Let's not uh, have it hanging around. I think we've got enough to, uh, on the single stage, send it directly to... Uh, well, maybe we should add another stage. Now, let, let, we're just testing it out for now. We can uh, fling it out to interplanetary distances later. Let's just see how the interstellar pack works so that uh, the next time I'll start uh, KSP Interstellar Episode 1, it'll still be the same save, but... Uh, oh, I don't want conics. It'll still be the same save, but it'll be... Oh, that's really unfortunate looking. Oh, well. Um still in keeping with somewhat Russian style designs here. Alright. So yeah, uh, it'll still have the same save and we'll still have the same satellites. It'll just be uh, renamed to reflect the fact that I'm focusing on the KSP Interstellar pack so that it'll be differentiated from my Realism Overhaul series. Alright, and... Hmm, this should go here. All right, so let's say, hmm, what should we call this? Well, let's call it a Nova One. <laughs> uh, for many reasons, uh, very amusing name, but uh, yeah, let's go with Nova One. And let's try it out. Yeah, let's just save it and launch. Hmm. Generator shut down. No reactor available. I thought I'd put a reactor on this thing. Um. Hmm. Okay, uh, let, let me go back to the VAB and see what's up with this. It's possible that I separated the generator from the, from the reactor and that's causing a problem. Let's see. Yeah, okay, so the priority is the generator has to be directly attached to the to the, um, radi uh, to the um, reactor, but the fuel doesn't. So we can actually set the fuel up and just make sure that the... Well, let's see now. Yeah, this should be fine. I'm worried about whether I need to connect the 
heat radiators out uh, directly, but I don't think so. I think the heat radiators will work even if they're not connected directly. And so let me, uh, oh, this way. Oh, there's still something in the way? Uh oh. Well then, how about we flip it over? Oh, what's still in the way? Okay. I don't see anything that should be in the way right now. Well, let's just get a new, new one then. So yeah, the the electric generator has to be connected directly to the reactor. That's what I'm dealing with right now. What's in the way? I guess maybe these tanks. Hold on a sec. Okay, now you go back on. Okay. Alright, let's get the batteries back on. And finally the heat radiators. And again, I'm being a little bit overly cautious about having uh, such huge radiator capacity. Also, I actually just want it to look good because these, when they spread out, they look really good. So, so it's probably for looks too. A lot of, I mean, because of the way that all the KSP Interstellar part. Uh, pack parts work together. It's very complicated to sort them all out So that's what I'm going to be endeavoring to make clear in this series. So you can see that the the Well, you can't see right now, but the reactor is smack dab in between the electric generator and the thermal nozzle and Just keep it that way. That's the ideal situation, but you must have some sort of propellant so the liquid fuel and oxidizer tanks are up there to provide the propellant as well Okay, I think this is a go. Let's try it out now. Okay, now we've got, and you can see the electric charge building up here because our reactor is online. And here you can see the reactor generating uh, 358 kilowatts of power and the demand is just 25 kilowatts here. Uh, so utilization is only 6.5. Now eventually we're going to see waste heat build up, but right now it's, uh, it's fine because I guess we haven't launched and stuff. Uh, it'll get more serious as we go up. All right. So SAS is on, throttle is up, and uh, we are we're, we're we're not really too concerned about where this ends up. But let's get into orbit first. All right. And I'm thankful that I don't have to worry about engine ignition. So uh, oh, the megajoules are building up too here. You see. All right. So here we go. We don't need to be full power right now. So I'm gonna throttle down. Okay. Now that the rockets are on, you can see that utilization has gone down because they're providing electric charge as well. What they don't, <coughs> sorry, what they don't provide is megajoules, and so the megajoules are just coming from our generator, which is uh, converting the power from the from the reactor Rem the reactor basically just produces heat the generator converts that heat into electricity uh, by presumably having the heat pass over some water that turns turbines for instance and or you could uh, well you could have it set up a number of different ways but that would be the most basic and and so uh, that's what's going on there. The thermal nozzle is just the way you pass the propellant through the reactor and uh, it just shoots right out of the thermal nozzle after being heated by the reactor. And the key is the velocity with which the exhaust gets spewed out. That's actually what ISP depends on. 
and it turns out that the exhaust gets spewed out pretty fast when you've got a, when you've got a nuclear reactor doing all the heating. All the particles get thrown out very quickly. And that's what heat is, really. Heat is just uh, the kinetic energy in the particles, which means how fast they're moving. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. Oh, darn. Eek. I don't believe it. I messed up the... Okay, no. Just gonna go the other way. Messed up the launch. That is a first in a long time. Okay. Yeah, I just uh, went too far away from the prograde vector, and I was really tilting down farther than I needed to, probably because I was distracted. But anyway, all, all is good. Right, waste heat is starting to build up, as you can see. But we've got a huge waste heat capacity thanks to those really heavy radiators. So let's uh, let's dump the fairing right now, I think. And I don't think we need this anymore. We clearly have enough power. Uh, I've action grouped that one antenna, and I think it's about time to bring it out. Is it? Yeah, it's sticking out here. All right. Oh, it's gonna actually—it's so long that it's actually gonna interfere with this antenna, isn't it? It's probably because I shifted stuff around. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this here, cut the launch stage, so that it'll fall back into the atmosphere. And now we'll see whether this uh, probe works. And really, I'm not too concerned with uh, with getting it to do something this time. This is purely a tech demonstration. So let's let's make sure it's all connected up. Let's actually get its uh, front antenna out. Um, let's say, uh, target, oh, who's our resident? Um, hmm, tough to say which satellite would really be best. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna go with Comsat H, I think. Or that might cause problems once we're on the other side of the planet. Comsat V, then. Okay, Comsat V. Let me briefly pop on over to Comsat V to make sure it knows about this. Uh, of course, I could just point the antenna at it. I know that, but uh, I I'm gonna be doing a lot of stuff with this craft, and I don't want to fidget around too much. Okay, so the main dish on Comsat V is on unknown target. That probably means it was a previous mission. Now it's on Nova 1. Alright, so that's set up. Okay, so now we can activate. Oh good, it didn't knock off the other antenna. Alright, and uh, let's get resources up and uh, let's ditch the rest of this uh, assemblage. So, yep. Yeah. Toddles down. Alright. 
so now we are this little satellite thing. Should have actually grouped the radiators. I wonder why I'm getting such lag with this. I wonder... Anyway, um... Yep, should have action grouped the radiators. Uh, they fold out very nicely. Uh, but you can't see it because it was in the dark. Okay, so yeah, it looks very neat. Nifty. And you notice that uh, electric charge is not an issue because we've got a bloody nuclear reactor on board, so... No problems there. And uh, what's our power usage exactly? Hello? Uh, oh, it's up here. Haha. <laughs> Only 0.4%, uh, so even the smallest nuclear reactor gives you plenty of uh, electric charge if you need it. And that's because a lot of the other KSB interstellar pack uh, parts have a lot of power draw. So uh, you think, oh, well, this is a huge amount of power, but not really once you're talking about the other parts that work with it. And that's the key to the whole interstellar pack, is how all the parts work together. Okay, our reaction control is fine. Uh, let's see if we can thrust forward into a full orbit now. Now, this only has 0.6 kilonewtons worth of... Oh, 1.2 kilonewtons worth of power. So, it, we're talking about ion engine kind of stuff here. Uh, with a bigger nuclear reactor and bigger nozzle, you can have much more power. However, those are also heavier. So you have to take that into consideration. And also produce more waste heat, which in turn means that you have to carry bigger radiators. Now, you can see enable tritium breeding here, and that means to uh, allow this to create tritium, which will allow you to use a fusion reactor. This is a fission reactor, okay? So this is a fission reactor, but there are fusion reactors down the road in the KSP Interstellar Tech Tree, but you'll need tritium and deuterium for those. Uh, another thing about this is that it could, if you get, have the right tech level, we're not at that tech level yet, but at the right tech level, you could use thorium and F4, thorium F, what is it, uh, thorium fluoride. Uh, right now it's using uranium fluoride, and its uh, consumption of uh, uranium fluoride is very slow, so even though it's, it looks like it has very little, 0.02, this will deplete very, very slowly. So that's not a big problem. Uh, you're talking about, you know, nuclear reactors do not deplete their um, fuel very quickly. So this is the um, electric generator, and you can see it's a uh, gas turbine. It specifies what cycle it's using, so you could probably look that up on Wikipedia or something. And uh, max power, its efficiency is 26.7%. That can be upgraded. Once you've got further into the tech tree, that is upgradable. And that, that just like this is upgradable to the different type of fuel. Okay, and there is a wiki page for the KSB Interstellar Pack that explains all this. And it is indispensable. In fact, I, I actually keep it open in my Google Chrome uh, because I have to refer to it regularly. I play around with this stuff off to the side too, so it's not like I'm uh, jumping into this for the first time. Um, I've, I've been messing around with the interstellar pack quite a lot. That doesn't mean I don't forget stuff, because there's a lot to remember when using the interstellar pack. Uh, especially when you get to the more comp- this is, this is as simple as it gets. Uh, it just gets more complicated from here. And uh, more intricate, and the vessels you create will be more sophisticated. Alright, so we are in orbit. We are in a full orbit so we can power that down. Nice that the rocket at least works. <laughs> That's always a trick. And um, and everything else works. I mean, we're, we are, we're, we're all good. Uh, shall we try and get somewhere? Uh, our apoapsis is here. Maybe we should get to the moon. Burn out of our periapsis. Uh, we're not right. Uh, we'll have to... burn a little bit off of our periapsis. Well, probably a lot off from our periapsis. Uh, do we have an inclination? No, not much, so that's not complicating things. Let's see, set as target. Huh. 
Looks like the moon will move quite a lot by the time we want to get there. Yeah, so the moon's not a very good target. And obviously Mimis is not a very good target. Um, any planets worth visiting? Nah, Duna is in totally the wrong position. I forget what the angle with Eve is supposed to be. Anyway, I think uh, I think we've done enough in terms of how to use the interstellar pack in this episode. So just remember, uh, your reactor needs to be sandwiched between your electric generator, and if you've got a thermal nozzle, you don't need to use it with a thermal nozzle. If you've got another rocket at the bottom, that's fine. You could have your fuel attached to a different rocket and just use the nuclear reactor for electric uh, power generation, for instance. However, uh, the nuclear reactor is pretty heavy for just that. And obviously it uh, creates a lot of uh, a lot of other situations like waste heat, which is still building up here. Actually, let's let's make our goal to get it out of the territory where it's still building waste heat, because uh, this stuff should be radiated away. You can see the radiators have a temperature differential, and it as you get colder and colder uh, into interstellar space, and uh, just just in general, they're going to get more and more efficient. And you can see power radiated increasing here. So we're near our apoapsis now. And uh, we still got waste heat building up. So I'm actually going to try and circularize out here. And it's gonna create another little bit of space junk but it's not like we're short of that anyway. So let's get to our apoapsis and circularize. I wonder how far out of uh, Kerbin we have to be in order to can I see? Oh, it's zoomed out really far, and it's dark. Ha! Huh. Great combination. All right, so next time I should just dump the RCS. We've got the uh, reaction. Uh, we've got the reaction wheels. So, all right. Now you'll note that when I'm using the thermal nozzle, uh, it doesn't build up any more megajoules. But the one that's the megajoules that are stored don't get depleted, nor does that nor does the electric charge get depleted. So it's not like an ion engine like that. So the um, once you're uh, the one thing that does get depleted, of course, is liquid fuel and oxidizer. Those get shoved through the reactor and create the plume, but but otherwise it's not uh, drawn the power supply. Yeah, but it does stop the megajoules from uh, replenishing. So keep that in mind if you've got other stuff that requires those megajoules. Now, of course, all burns with this are going to take an absurdly long time. So let me uh, physical time warp. And it looks like we're fa uh, stable through 4x physical time warp. All the lags seem to have been with either Kerbin or the launch system. This part does not have much lag. Okay, so I think this is good enough. Let's cut that out. And let's see about this waste heat situation. So we've been through an hour of flight, let's say. And we've built up 2,000 units of waste heat and we're still building it up. Uh, let's see how much we build up in the next hour. Okay, we're out of connection. Another 2,000. Hmm. Looks like we have to be pretty far out before we get to... any sort of stability as far as waste heat is concerned. I mean, so even with these huge radiators, we're still building up quite a lot of heat. Though less and less, you can see the number ticking down here, I hope you can.
So eventually, I think it's going to reach some sort of equilibrium, some sort of point where it's no longer building up more and more waste heat. And we've got a huge capacity, so we can wait for that point. Let's just go through a day. So it's steadily ticking down, 134, continuing down. So yeah, I think I think I'm satisfied at least now that uh, this will eventually hit some sort of bottom in terms of waste heat buildup, and it'll be stable. And with a, a waste heat capacity of 1.65 million, and maybe it'll build up a maximum of 20,000 in the first day. You've got to figure that you talk about 800 days worth of. Uh, of waste heat supply and that's if it continued at the same level it did on the first day which it's not going to okay so I think that's going to be our introduction to the interstellar mod this time I'm going to deorbit this because oh well uh, let's wait till we get connection it's just on the dark side there we go I'm going to deorbit this because this was just a demonstration and uh, yeah, we're deorbiting something with, well, okay. You know what, let's, let's keep it realistic here. Uh, this thing has nuclear material on it. Um, we should just leave it in the sort of a satellite graveyard. I'm not going to deorbit it. Uh, deorbiting nuclear stuff, not good. Alright, so let's, let's just uh, make that a rule. Um, yeah. So that's a preliminary introduction to the Interstellar Pack, uh, the very basics. This is the first thing you'll want to try out. And clearly, uh, you can see what we're going to go to next. Really what we're going to go to next is something like Voyager, right? Uh, uh, interplanetary probe. In order to do that, we need to put these dishes on some relay satellites. So um, at least two relay satellites need to have the long-range dishes so that we can communicate with the long-range mission and they'll probably have to be uh, directly over the KSC and at a 90 degree angle to the KSC and then we'll have uh, continuous communication hopefully and then well really we just need one we I mean if we lose communication for a bit it'll be pain in the ass okay so uh, so yeah maybe two and then the probe will have two I guess uh, not the best setup, I would think, but but yeah, we'll we'll take a look at it. So we have to put relay satellites up, and then we'll have some craft like this with a nuclear rocket. Uh, I mean, a, no, I shouldn't say nuclear rocket, a reactor and a thermal nozzle uh, connected to a much larger supply of propellant, uh, accelerating very very slowly but making its way to other planets. Okay, so that's that's a plan. That's not the only plan that we have in store for this, but that's something I want to try, and we'll have scientific experiments on that probe uh, in order to uh, investigate those other planets. So that's the idea, and uh, so you can look forward to that in the Interstellar series. So it'll be a KSP Interstellar series. Instead of uh, being labeled Institute for Critical Studies, but it'll still be in the same save. All right. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.